This video is based on the recent publication by Dr. Keith Johnson of MIT in the International Journal of Astrobiology. The first known interstellar object, Oumuamua, entered our solar system in 2017 and has been a mystery ever since. Theories of its origin abound, including alien. The most likely origin is natural, as described in the recent publication. In the following, we elaborate on this fractal dust scenario and suggest that Oumuamua may actually be a source of cosmic dark matter. Cosmic dust from supernovae explosions a scourge to many astronomers, some who may even have lost a Nobel Prize because of it. Yet, cosmic dust, coated within layers of amorphous water ice, is a blessing in disguise. With the help of incident cosmic radiation, water nanoclusters are ejected into space from the amorphous water ice coatings of the cosmic dust. These water nanoclusters are dodecahedrally shaped and have quantum Rydberg electron states shown here to extend beyond each cluster. They are the basis for Rydberg dark matter. While Oumuamuo is very large compared to nano-sized cosmic dust, around 100 meters long and possibly disc-shaped, it should be covered by layers of amorphous water ice. The fractal nature of this huge dust aggregate, combined with the effects of solar and cosmic radiation, should promote the ejection of water nanoclusters to interstellar space. There, water clusters constitute a form of Rydberg baryonic dark matter, as is the case for ordinary cosmic dust, and thus will be invisible. This explains the lack of a cometary tail, which had ruled out the theory that Oumuamua is a comet. The ejection of water nanoclusters from Oumuamua may also promote its rotation. Where in our galaxy did Oumuamua come from? Was the otherwise natural fractal dust object with its amorphous water ice coating possibly engineered purposely? Could the ejected water nanoclusters comprising Rydberg matter have another cosmic goal and cosmology implications? One of the largest and most distant reservoirs of water, detected in the universe, exists in a high redshift quasar, more than 12 billion light years away. A quasar is an extremely bright active galactic object, in which a supermassive black hole, with mass ranging from millions to tens of billions of times the mass of our Sun, is surrounded by a gaseous accretion disk. The quasar water vapor mass is at least 140 trillion times the mass of all the water in the oceans of planet Earth, and 100,000 times more massive than our Sun. The quasar water vapor produces cosmic water nanoclusters. They are a coolant for rapid early star formation. Gravitational collapse of these stars leads to a massive spinning black hole like that shown here. The entangled, low-entropy water nanoclusters that helped create the stars that collapse to the black hole will be pulled into it by its gravitation. Inside, they constitute exotic matter with negative pressure that promotes wormhole formation. Is it possible that the raining down by these water nanoclusters on a planet that was associated with one of the collapsing stars, but is now captured by the black hole, could provide the water necessary for life on that planet? Perhaps even a water planet? such as those in the science fiction film, Interstellar, where a team of scientists, attempting to save humanity from a dying Earth, travel through a wormhole, and land on water and ice-covered planets near a black hole. At far enough distances from the black hole, at least 10 light years, the gravitational environment is stable enough for planets to form from the dense dust of the accretion disk, According to published research, more than 10,000 planets are possible around a supermassive black hole. For such a planet, 
the accretion disk would be as bright in the sky as Earth's sun. Because such quasars and their associated massive black holes are the oldest objects in the universe, even a few life-supporting planets there would allow for the possibility of technologically advanced civilizations to exist not long after the very beginning of the universe. Such a civilization may have launched probes into the black hole to investigate its space-time singularity and possibly engineered a stable wormhole pass through to the other side. The human brain is approximately 75% water by weight. Much of that water is in the form of nanoclusters inside the neuron microtubules. Their terahertz vibrations are a basis for human consciousness. If this were true also for an early advanced civilization, information carried by the quantum entangled water nanoclusters, and thus consciousness itself, could be preserved as one is swept through the wormhole connecting the black hole to a white hole in another part of the universe. The quantum entangled, low entropy water nanoclusters, and the conscious information carried by them, could possibly survive and be transported out of the wormhole as so-called Hawking radiation, into another part of the universe. What universe? A popular cosmology theory is the multiverse, which follows from the inflationary Big Bang theory. In the multiverse, it is likely that few universes have the exact physical constants that permit the existence of water and other prebiotic molecules necessary for planetary life as we know it. In contrast to the multiverse, the parallel universes, or many worlds theory, derived from quantum mechanics, predicts an infinite number of nearly identical worlds. Here parallel lives occur simultaneously, but we have no practical way of entering or communicating with those worlds. In conclusion, amorphous water ice coated cosmic dust and Oumuamua eject water nanoclusters filling space as a quintessent scalar field of life-supporting dark matter, like the fifth element of Plato and Aristotle. This is the terahertz radiative mode of an ejected pentagonal dodecahedral water nanocluster, equal in frequency to the 1.7 terahertz value in the formula that agrees with the presently observed dark energy density. The indicated anisotropic dipole moments along the nanocluster axis are precursors to water nanocluster birefringence, analogous to the terahertz induced birefringence of liquid water. Observational evidence for birefringence of the cosmic microwave background has recently been reported. As our universe continues to expand, water nanoclusters ejected from cosmic dust will grow larger and their vibrational frequencies will decrease. Large water clusters are less interacting with the prebiotic molecules of life. With decreasing vibration frequency, dark energy density also decreases. The universe will stop expanding and contract as the gravity of the remaining matter takes over. The universe will expand again, leading to a single cyclic universe instead of an inflationary multiverse. According to this scenario, we are presently living at the ideal time in our universe for life, as we know it, to exist. And water nanoclusters, ejected from cosmic dust, could be the seeds of life throughout the universe.